Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Bible. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. In particular, as we start a new week, I think it'd be a wonderful thing if we could spend it together digging into the Word of God and spending some time praying for one another. And so this is what we do every day on First Five. I invite you to read with me one chapter of Scripture, and together we are working our way through book by book the Bible. And so we are currently in the Gospel of Matthew, the very first book of the New Testament. And so today we come to Matthew chapter 14. and I'm sorry, chapter 13, rather. Uh, and so uh, my... Hope would be that when we're all done, you take a moment and you read the whole of Matthew chapter 13. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion. We're going to be looking at verses 53 through 57. So it comes very near the end of the chapter. And so if you have a Bible handy, or if you want to open it up on your Bible app, I would invite you to join me in Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 53. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began to teach the people in their synagogues, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary, and aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters here with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own hometown and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. This is actually a really interesting chapter. I can't wait until you read the whole chapter. It is a chapter packed full of parables. So you probably know that a parable is a story. It's not a true account. It's a story made up to teach a point, right? It's a way that, that Jesus would teach certain truths is by telling a story about them and helping them connect through the story, right? A parable always had a a lesson and certain key components that you could kind of pick out and they would teach some insight or a lesson in some way. And so Jesus often taught with parables. Now what's interesting is that in this chapter he does something that he doesn't always do. In this chapter he explains several of the parables. Most of the time, more often than not, Jesus would tell a parable and just leave it hanging and let people think about it, and sort of try to figure it out on their own what it meant. But in this case, in these chapter, in this chapter in particular, several times the disciples asked him to explain the parable so they were sure they understood it. One of the really interesting parables that's contained within chapter 13 is the parable of the sower. You may know this one, where a farmer comes along and he sows his seed, and some falls on the pathway, and some among the rocky soil, and some among the thorns and some among the good soil, and, and different things happen, but only among the good soil is there really a harvest. And it talks about how the, the, the good news of the gospel is spread out over lots of people, and some receive it, and some start to receive it, and then the world chokes it out, and some, the devil snatches it up before they ever get it. But some produces a great harvest. And then after that, there's the parable of the mustard seed, how something so small becomes so large, the biggest tree in the garden. And so he compares that to the kingdom of God that would start so small and yet expand into something so great. This is a story of the pearl of great price and so and the treasure hidden in the field. And talked about how when you find something so precious, you'd sell everything to get it. And talks about the kingdom of God in that way. So there's, there's some great teachings in this chapter. And then... We get to the very end of the chapter where we come to this part that we just read. After teaching and preaching and healing in several different regions, he comes to Nazareth, his hometown. Nazareth is a Jewish community, and so 
He goes into their synagogues and he begins to teach them. The people are amazed. His teaching is, is powerful and, and profound. And, and they see some of his miracles and they hear about some of the things he's done in other communities. And then they see of his wisdom and his insight and all of that. And they're just really kind of blown away, right? Just exactly what happened in most other communities that Jesus visited. The people would just be astounded by what Christ did and said what he taught. But then something strange happens. The people recognize Jesus from before, from when he lived there, before he began preaching. And someone says, wait a minute, isn't this the carpenter's kid? Isn't that Mary's son? Don't his brothers and sisters live right here with us? And then it says something interesting in verse 57. It says, And they took offense at him. Isn't that weird? Right? They've heard the teaching. They've seen a few of the miracles, although he didn't do many there because of their lack of faith. And they'd heard amazing reports from other communities. And yet, they simply discount him. Right? They, they no longer give him credibility. Why? Because they knew him when. You ever hear that expression? I knew you when. Do you know that the same thing sometimes happens to us? When Christ gets a hold of us, it changes us, right? It, it changes our outlook, it changes our priorities, it changes our behavior, right? It, it changes uh, everything about our lives. And sometimes, the people who knew us prior to coming to Christ have a difficult time accepting that change, hearing even the good news from us, or accepting our testimony, even when it's good. And sometimes it's going to happen that, that we're going to have to walk away. There are going to be times when people will not accept the new us, the way Christ has transformed us. And we may find that we've even got to let go sometimes of people from, from our past in order to move into our future. And so don't be surprised if if you've come to Christ and your life has been transformed, don't be surprised if not everyone accepts it. Some might even take offense. But continue on the course and stick with Jesus. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this really interesting, insightful teaching. After Jesus had done so much and, and displayed so much and, and shared so much wisdom and teaching and parables and all that, these folks from his hometown won't receive him. Because they knew him when. They knew him before he became called to this ministry, this public ministry. And so, Lord, sometimes for us, people who knew us when won't be accepting of us. But help us, Lord, to persevere, to press on, and to continue to do all that you've called us to. I pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.